Nancy Alderson McDonald is a 1978 graduate of Grove City College. Uh, while she was here, she was uh, in the choir. She was a member of the Sisters of Gamma Chi. <laughs> she is the uh, president of an organization known as Value of the Person, which uh, enhances the value of person. She'll tell you a little bit about that this morning. Uh, she and her husband also own a restaurant holding group, uh, which includes Juniper Grill, Atrias, and Ditkas in the Pittsburgh area. We're really excited to have Nancy here at Harbison Chapel this morning. We look forward uh, to what she's going to share with us. So please welcome her to the Harbison Chapel pulpit, Nancy Alderson McDonald. Good morning, everybody. Oh, come on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yes, I know. It's a tough one. It is so great to be here with you today. You know, I want to thank uh, Emily and, and Chase for uh, reading the scripture today. Because you know what the scripture was all about? It's all about love. And I'm very blessed that I have my dear friend here with me today, Barb, who's also my partner. And that's the one thing that she always talks about. And it's really all about love. So it wasn't that long ago that I sat where you sat. So I remember what it was like. Now you may think 1978 was a long time ago, but it really wasn't to me. And when I look out and I see your faces, I see that it really was a different time. And your faces are different and your stories are different. Your clothes are different than back way back when. But I'll tell you one thing that's the same. Our hearts, see our hearts are the same. I'm gonna ask you a question. How many here, now are you listening to me, okay? Because this is a tough question. How many of you here do not wanna be treated with love or dignity or respect? How many of you here do not want to be valued. We all want that, don't we? And when you think about the folks that are still back in the dorms, how many of them do you think don't want to be valued or treated with love or dignity or respect? And if you think about it in your home, is there anyone there that doesn't want that? Probably the answer is no, because it's all about our hearts. See, it doesn't matter how old we are or how young we are, but we all very desperately want to be treated with love. And so we have just found something that no matter how old we are or how young we are, <coughs> that we've come together on something that we can all agree on. So since my time at Grove City, I have been fortunate to have spent 30 years spreading a message of love that was called the value of the person. And there's not enough time today, this morning, to give you all the great details of all the things that we've been doing with the value of the person in the workplace. To change hearts, to change businesses, to change lives. And so we've do, been doing great things, and hopefully someday I can come back again, and I'll be able to tell you all of the details about that great work that we're doing, and all the things that are changing, and perhaps you can help us to do that as well. But what I want to do today is to focus on something a little bit different. And that is, instead of the details of value of the person and that business, I want to talk to you about the journey that it has taken for me to be standing here today. See, we all do have journeys, don't we? Each one of us, very different. We all have our own stories as well. But what I want to do is to talk to you about a journey that I have been on that was based and began with a very dramatic act of love. See, I want to read you a story, an excerpt from a book 
called Stronger Than Steel. It was written by R.C. Sproul. And the story that I want to read you today is about two young men. One's name was Wayne, and the other one's name was Red. Wayne was 18 years old, and his friend is Red Preston, and he was 21, about the age of many of you in here. And the story goes like this. See, these two young men found themselves at a point in time in World War II in the Siegfried Line. And they found themselves there. And I'm going to read you a part of the story that is told by Wayne about what happened to them in that particular <laughs> point in time. It says this. Red and I broke out of the forest in a run. We were the first to make it beyond the dragon's teeth. Firing our machine guns wildly, we jumped to the end of a German trench. And we had been cut off from our battalion and our radio had been knocked out in the firefight. We carefully moved down the trench, winning it step by step and yard by yard. Suddenly, without warning, I found myself staring into the eyes of a German soldier. As our lies locked, I could see his fear, and he could see mine. He was a big man. His rifle was pointed toward my heart, and in his other hand, a grenade with the pin already pulled. Within a split second, the German threw the grenade at my feet, and without flinching, I sprayed him with fire. He fell to the ground as the grenade, as the grenade exploded in my face. I was stunned, numb, and disoriented, and just stood there with blood gushing from my head. Red rushed to my side as I stumbled into a position that was completely exposed to enemy fire. He hugged me and shielded me with his own body, and then he whispered, I will not leave you. And Red didn't run. He protected me and exposed himself to a German sniper. Red never saw the bullet coming, and the man that others had called a screw-off had just saved my life. Death was so quick that he probably never felt it. As the bullet penetrated the back of his head, his blood flowed out, and it blended with mine. Red lived out the words of Jesus in John 15:13. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friend. And Wayne said for that, he was eternally grateful. It's a pretty powerful story. And what's even more powerful is that that man, Wayne, was my father. You see, Red made a choice to protect his friend, and in so doing, he demonstrated the greatest form of love, that he laid down his life for his friend. You see, remember this, one person can make a difference. And in the years to come, after that point in time, and the Siegfried Line, in World War II, Wayne met another friend who laid down his life for him, and his name was Jesus, and he showed him that unconditional love. And then one day, as time went on, my dad found himself at a crossroads, at a point in time, like Red had a point in time, he had a point in time, where he too needed to make a choice, and he was put 
in charge of a steel foundry in Pitra, called Pitron in Glassport, Pennsylvania. And that was about a foundry that wasn't a thriving place. He was put in charge of a foundry that was about to close. It was filled with labor strife and people angry and hatred. Every reason to throw the place away because we're not going to care enough to make it change. But then he heard his friend Jesus say this, go and bear fruit, good fruit, and love one another. So against all odds, he made a choice to figure out what it would take to love one another in the workplace. And the value of the person terminology that we've talked about today began to take shape as lives of the people in that plant changed. And the company changed. And the plant thrived. And there was this transformation. Do you know why there was transformation at Pitron? It's because people transformed. The same way it can be here on this campus. Because people were transformed. You see, one person can make a difference. And so now, let's fast forward. Because while Pitron was transforming, I was watching on the sidelines. And I experienced myself at that point in time the power that comes from love. And remember this word, everyone. It's key to everything. It's love and relationships, because out of relationships and love, everything flows. Everything can be resolved. So as you fast forward to back in the late 1970s, I am sitting exactly where all of you are sitting, right here. And it was a point in time when I was faced with a choice, sitting just like you. What career path would I take? And as I sat where you sit, I heard my friend Jesus say, go bear fruit, good fruit, and love one another. So at that point in time that I found here in Harbison Chapel, I made a choice to commit my life to making a difference in the work world. I've been doing that for 30 some years to bring the value of the person to the workplace where love and dignity and respect are so badly needed. You see, one person can make a difference. Remember that. One person can make a difference. And so now we come today, right now, to this point in time, right now, and for some reason, you all are sitting here this morning. Now, I could think that you really came to hear me, but I don't think that's it, because back in the day, we got a hole punch to see if we came to chapel. Well, I see there's this fancy scanner now, which is pretty amazing. So I'm thinking it's probably more that you really wanted to get the credit over with, but that's okay, because I love you. It's all about love, right? Yeah. So anyway, so, but guess what? We are here at this point in time, right? And guess what? We will never be like this again. Never will we be like this again. And you see, remember this, that one person can make a difference. So I, let me ask you this question as you sit here. So pay attention to this. So are you listening to this question? Okay. What is Jesus saying to you today? So you're here at this point in time. This could be your point in time. So what is he saying to you today? Because it's really all about love. To go bear fruit, good fruit, and to love one another. You see, love has to be purposeful, guys. It's a choice. And it must be experienced. You see, one person 
can make a difference. And you, when you walk through the doors to leave here this morning, the question is, what difference are you going to make? So I'm going to give you something to think about, something that maybe you can do. How many of you have cell phones? Ooh, a lot of you. A bigger question. How many of you know how to text? Ah, so you know what? I think we found something else that we all have in common. Not just that we want to be treated with value and love and dignity and respect. We all have cell phones, and we all know how to text. So you are really doing well. So here's something I'd like you to think about doing today. So are you still with me? You, you listening? Okay. Here's something I'd like you to do today. I'd like you to try to find a point in time where you decide to text your mom or you text your dad or your grandmother, whatever. Not because you want money. You see, I have a 21-year-old son, too, and I know that the only time I see the text come is he needs me. He's either in trouble or he needs something. So. We don't want you to, here's what I'd like you to do. Here's what I want you to say. I want you to say this. I was thinking about you, and I just want you to know that I love you. Now, when the ding happens on the other end, and they look down at the screen to see it's you, and they read your message, I guarantee you that their heart will be filled with a spirit of joy and they will have experienced through that phone your love. And I also guarantee you this, that the people around them are going to also experience that joy as well. You see, one person can make a difference. And so we are called to be salt and light. Salt and light. That's what we're called to do. Because we walked into a room, the people there are better. So there's a story I read that was about a young man who was about to commit suicide. And there was a woman there who intervened, and the story had a happy ending, and he did not pursue the path he was going. And that woman reached out to him, and she hugged him and embraced him. And do you know what he said to her? He said it had been seven years since anyone had hugged him. You see, one person can make a difference. So we are called to be like salt and light. So what is it that can, you can do? Any of you are seniors in here? A few? I'm going to give you something to think about. For when you walk in to that first day when you take that job and you go to your office where you're going to be, and here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to seek out not the CEO, but I'd like you to seek out the janitor. I want you to find the janitor, and I want you to say thank you. And I want you to get close enough that you lean in and you look them in the eye and you see their heart. Because when you do to the least of these, you do to all. You see, one person can make a difference. We need to be salt and light. And people need to see Jesus in us. And they need to experience his love through you. So one person can make a difference. And so perhaps today is your point in time while you're sitting here. So my prayer is that because you are here, that you will be that one person to make a difference to someone else. It may be sending a text. It may be a hug. It may be a thank you or a smile. Be purposeful with your love. 
And when you leave here today at 9.50, and I am right on time, because they have this clock up here, <laughs> that when you leave here today, you will remember that love changes hearts, and changed hearts can change the world. <laughs> And I hope that you will be great heart changers today. Are you listening? Are you listening? Yes. Chapel is dismissed. Woo!